Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. And yes, folks, we are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, we are making it quick this evening because, once again, running behind. All right, folks, first, you are going to see the link right there in the description box alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, you know the drill, sign your name, click on your senator, and the ever-present and self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. Now, folks, when we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of a catch clip of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please go ahead, use your headphones, all right? Now, it is 5.05 .05 in the evening, and yes, folks, I am exhausted. So if I stumble over any of my words, apologies in advance, all right? Okay, so back where we left off here. Generally, the group home facilities are very adequate. The houses themselves are nicely furnished and well-maintained. Locations are within established communities. However, it did not appear that shopping areas or recreation facilities were nearby. You really think they care about these kids' recreation? I'm just, I'm just going to say it. You know... They don't want these kids having fun. They don't want them having opinions. They don't want them using their voices. They don't want them socializing. They want robots. Just saying. There are televisions, stereo, record players, and other appropriate kinds of furnishings in most of the houses. The set of the dining room where the children spend a major portion of their time in after-school programming is out of place in a home setting. The houses were also equipped with such items as electric alarms connected to some of the beds. These sound if a child leaves his bed. Also in the bedrooms, one of the children was observed being restrained in her bed by legs and arm restraints tied to the four bedposts, spread eagled. Because, yeah, that's not fucking terrifying. Despite these restraints, she continued to bang her head on the mattress. Yet the tends to happen when you're fucking terrified. The most worst thing you can fucking do to an autistic is com make me completely immobilized. I'm just going to say it. That's going to make me freak out more, not less. A weighted blanket, on the other hand, works wonders. Just say it. Oh, that... Sorry, guys. Blind fell. And I do not have an edit button. <sighs> Come on, really? <sighs> I hate these things, folks. All I paid for rent, you think I could get some decent blinds? Sorry, brief interlude. Okay. These kinds of equipment and practices were not appropriate to the home environment. Oh, gee, you think, Karen? Staff. BRI is staffed with paraprofessionals and professionals from a number of disciplines. Directed by Dr. Matthew Israel, a psychologist. The school employs special education teachers, a psychologist, social workers, part-time nurse, consultant staff, and paraprofessional treatment workers. But how long are they trained? This is 1979. What was it then? A week? Professional, my ass. On what planet? Each classroom area is supervised by a teacher who writes the goals and helps to implement some of these. Paraprofessional treatment workers in each classroom also implement the program both on a student-wide and individual basis. I'm sure they do. Support staff includes clinical workers and those who help to prepare and distribute the food for the mini meal component of the program. Oh, you mean when you make them earn every bite of food that they have? And you call that a mini meal? 
Well, I guess it's appropriate, isn't it? The group homes are staffed by paraprofessionals who carry out the treatment programs in the residences. Group home routines are scheduled and supervised by professional staff members. Daily routine for residents. The children rise at approximately 7 a.m. and begin to dress and get ready for the day. Since breakfast does not begin until the children arrive at the school, morning in the home allows for personal hygiene and dressing activities. You mean the ones where they supervise by sitting in the bathroom, on the toilet, while they shower? Those? Vans transport the children for approximately a 30-minute ride to the school. A few of the children are restrained with handcuffs and vision-blocking helmets for the entire ride. Notably, one New York resident was handcuffed behind his back during all his travel. His back deformity made this posture most uncomfortable. Well, gee, you fucking think... The children arrive at the school about 9 a.m. At this time, they are toileted and begin the daily routine. The school day extends from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. Most notable in the daily routine is the lack of any normal reference points, such as a lunch hour or recess time. That's because they're not a school, hon. They're more of an institution. You know, this side of Nazi Germany. Children begin working as soon as they arrive at school and continue throughout the day. Tasks vary somewhat depending on whether the child is working in a small group setting for six children or on an individual basis. These different grouping patterns provide the child with most of the programmatic variety he experiences during the school day. Sits background tasks such as stacking rings and shape boxes are constantly provided The children are almost never idle. In other words, they didn't ever give these kids any fucking downtime whatso goddamn ever. And they give them meaningless tasks that mean absolutely nothing in the real world. Who's surprised? One further notable part of the daily routine for the children is the visit by the school nurse. Once each day, each child disrobes so that the nurse can check his body for bruises or other injuries, which result from aversive techniques applied in the treatment process. I say it again, when you have a fucking school where the school nurse is there to check for bruising and it's due to your own treatment methods, that's not a fucking school, it's a goddamn prison. But I'm going to go ahead and close out on those thoughts, folks. We don't give very many thoughts. I'm sorry, oh my god. God, I did say I'm brain dead. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So folks, please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this evening. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.